Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. It has been getting a lot of attention in the last year or so for people with mental health challenges. I'm talking about ketamine, and we're going to learn more about it today. What are the benefits? What are the challenges with it? Um, who it supports, and we're going to get that directly from a physician that specializes in ketamine treatment, and he joins us today. Nathan Uncuffer is here with us. Hi, Nathan. How are you doing? Yeah. So let's go right to the basics. For anybody that has heard the word ketamine, not 100% sure what it is, please explain. Yeah. Um, I mean, ketamine's been around for a long time, and, you know, it was initially developed as an anesthetic for surgery, and that's what it's been used for, for, boy, over 40, 40 years. Um, but it kind of got a bad name as well because it was also abused as a street drug. Mm. Um, it's got a pretty strong hallucinogenic kind of psychedelic uh, effect, um, which people, you know, we're seeking in terms of the party lifestyle. So it got a kind of a bad name as a street drug. They use it a lot in veterinary medicine. So you'd hear about people, you know, breaking into vet clinics to steal the medication. But in the last, you know, 10 or 15 years, we've started to recognize that it has a benefit for mental health as well. Mm-hmm. Um, who are, tell us who like people have mental health challenges. Um, what type of challenges would uh, ketamine support? Yeah, so, you know, back in the 80s and 90s when people were abusing it as a street drug, and people still do today, but they, we were finding that people would report that they felt really good afterwards for like days or even weeks after using it. And it sort of became, you know, amongst drug culture, people would call it the afterglow. And you use ketamine one time and you're like, I felt great for like two weeks after that. Well, researchers, like scientific researchers, kind of grabbed onto that idea. And for about the last 20 years, they've been doing research where they'll give patients ketamine in a controlled environment and then kind of assess their their mental health improvements or not um, after getting the ketamine. And the data right now has been the strongest for depression, anxiety, uh, PTSD, Maybe OCD is in that as well, but the there's still ongoing studies in terms of bipolar disorder, even like drug and alcohol abuse, addiction. Um, we, we can get into you know when we get into how ketamine works, you could imagine that it may be beneficial for a whole variety of different neurologic disorders and not just mental health. Wow, I wasn't aware it can help with so many so many challenges and yeah, you know, it did get a bad rap back in the day. Um, it's administered how? Yeah. So there's different ways that it can be administered. The, the most potent way, I guess you would say, um, or the way that gets the most of it into your system is through an IV. Um, you know, essentially a hundred percent of the medication gets straight into your veins when you use an IV. Um, you can also use intramuscular shots and that's got a pretty high, they call it a, bioavailability, um, you know, how much of it gets into your bloodstream. That's in the high 90s um, wow. for intramuscular. And then the other routes go down significantly, right? So you can eat it and swallow it, but the only maybe 25% of it gets into your system that way. You can get it up against your mucous membranes by snorting it or putting it under your tongue. And that's maybe 30 or 40% bioavailability. But the, there's all these different routes that you can use to get it into your body. Well, you have a, a unique niche. <laughs> with this. Now you're an emergency medic and uh, medicine physician. Do I have that right? Yeah, exactly. Wow. Uh, tell us about your journey and then we're going to get back into ketamine and uh, you know, the effects of it and all of that. But how did you get into this uh, line of work? Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. It is a sort of a very unique niche that I just happen to have like the right credentials and the right training to get into, which is great that I was drawn to it because I feel like I'm one of, there's not a ton of people that are qualified to actually go out into people's homes and give it. Um, yeah, I was, I graduated medical school in the year 2000 and went into emergency medicine. And for the last 
nearly 20 years, I worked at big trauma centers in their emergency room. Wow. Um, most recently in Salt Lake City, where the last six years I was at one of the regional trauma centers. And then about a year ago, I started getting into the research and the data that was behind ketamine. And I had heard about ketamine for mental health, you know, basically my whole career. And I've used ketamine in the emergency room for sedation and anesthesia. So if somebody had like okay. a painful procedure, like a bone that needed to be set or a complex laceration, we'd give the patient a shot of ketamine, knock them out essentially for 45 minutes, do whatever we need to do, and then have them come back. And so I've always been familiar with ketamine. I've used it my whole career. But a year ago, I recognized that I had sort of gotten into a spot in my life where I was burned out, depressed, anxious, um, talked to a couple therapists, didn't really work, uh, tried a couple medications, you know, like the Prozac style medications didn't work, really work. Sure. And then I started reading the data on ketamine. And I'll tell you, I, I've always been very like data driven, Western medicine, I'm a physician. And you see these trends come along in medicine, like fads. And you see people talking about IV vitamins or colon cleanses or liver detox. And honestly, I kind of put ketamine into that category in my head. You know, it's like, the, oh, the celebrities are doing ketamine and you hear proponents of it sometimes are more of like the social media type. And so I hadn't really paid much attention to it. But about a year ago, I started getting into the research and into the data, which I think we'll get to as well. But I started seeing that there were there was real scientific studies being done by big universities, you know, like Yale and Stanford are kind of been the, the institutions that are driving the, the research. But study after study showing that it really works. In fact, up to like 75% of people that undergo the ketamine therapy show significant improvement in their mental health symptoms. And like 20 or 30% of those have like complete remission of their symptoms. Wow. Yeah. And so I was reading these studies, like, I, I, like, honestly, I read the first couple and I was like, no way, you know, like even, even the SSRIs, like the Prozacs and the, uh, the popular antidepressants, they only have like a 20 or 30% success rate. And so all of a sudden I'm like, ketamine can have up to 75%. Like, I don't know if I buy it. But I immersed myself in the data. I read all these papers. I read all these editorials from like real researchers. And uh, I decided that it, I, that I actually believed in the data. And so last year I underwent ketamine treatments myself at a different clinic. And it worked so well on me that I spent like six months going into work in the ER and kind of being like, why am I? Why am I going in to kill myself on another night shift when I'm burned out, I'm grouchy at work? Like this kind of night shift stuff is probably what kind of led me into feeling the way I was feeling. And so I made the plunge and I wow. opened the, a new business where I'm now a provider of ketamine for other people. Wow. What a story. By the way, thank you for your honesty and transparency about your situation. Uh, because that's how we learn. And that, that also takes away, now here's a doctor telling us that well, he had some challenges in life and then found something that, you know, with guidance can work and, and really change the way we think, the way we feel. Who is it for? Let's, let's look at that. We've identified, you know, those with mental health challenges, whether it's uh, depression, anxiety. How about some of the other things that it might be uh, impactful for? Yeah, so I think the first thing that everybody needs to know is that ketamine's been around for a long time. Its safety profile is super high and well known, but it's technically still not FDA approved to treat mental health. And so even though all these studies have come out and the data is very strong behind it, Sometimes it's just a paperwork issue or like a totally slowly getting the wheels to turn. So it's actually not FDA approved for any of these mental health things that we're about to talk about. But as a physician, you can still give it to people for 
mental health indications, it just has to be understood that it's considered off label. Um, I'm, and I just want to share with you, been through that. I have I've dealt with basal cell skin cancer 25 plus years. And about 20 something years ago, doctor gave me medication and says, just what you said. It's not for, it hasn't been approved by the FDA for use for skin cancer. It was actually genital wart cream. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of funny going to the pharmacy and getting a prescription for that and then saying, it's not what you think it's for. And, right. you know, years later, maybe 15 years later, it was eventually proved, uh, approved by the FDA for that use. But to your point, there's a lot of medications out there that have dual roles or multiple purpose roles just because it didn't get the FDA stamp. It works and it, and it works great. So just validating your point. And it will eventually get the FDA sure. approval. Hmm. Um, all right. I sort of got myself off track. I'm, I don't remember what we well, were. We were talking about how um, it's not approved for that use, but uh, you know, it, oh. with that understanding, you know, you can help people with it. Yeah. So who, even though it's not FDA approved, like who do we use it for? Right. It's so it's very early in the stages of, you know, figuring out the best way to use ketamine or what even what it's going to be the best for. But most people agree that there are certain things that have had enough data and studies behind them to say, like, these are the things that ketamine can treat. By far, the number one is the treatment resistant depression. It's people who have had depression. They've tried other treatments like therapy or other medications and have failed. And then um, the, the majority well, lots of the studies that have been done have been have used that type of patient in the study and shown really good results. And so treatment resistant depression is probably the big one. Wow. But there's also data, strong data behind anxiety and post traumatic stress disorder. And then there's weaker data showing improvement for things like OCD and bipolar and drug and alcohol addiction. Um, Tell me about so the experience. So when you administer a ketamine, what does somebody experience? And everybody's different. I get that. Yeah. So technically it is a psychedelic and it, it's similar in the realm of like psilocybin, which is the component in magic mushrooms or even LSD, which is acid uh, or DMT. There's a lot of new kind of psychedelics that are coming out as well, but um, in general, somebody gets a, either an IV or an injection of the ketamine. Within a few minutes, they start to feel kind of lightheaded and floaty, sort of meditative. And then that sensation goes deeper and deeper until you're kind of immersed into your own head and into your own thoughts. Most people dissociate from their body, so their consciousness kind of like goes into itself and you forget that your body's there and then people typically have sort of vivid visual hallucinations um wow that can be all all across the board i mean sometimes it's like geometric shapes that are turning sometimes it's more realistic uh seeing people talking to people seeing dead relatives um would you say that it gives you clarity in your life as well it does. And so a lot of times when you're in that psychedelic experience, and people will say this, we're all different types of psychedelics. Sometimes when you're finished with that experience, it's the experience itself is part of why you can have more of an open mind into like how you see the universe or even how you see your mental health. Hmm. Um, but, and this is what I actually really want to talk to you about is that ketamine there's a lot more than just the experience. And some people feel like the experience isn't even necessary. Some authors say like, no, the psychedelic kind of like uh, how you, like I said, how you see the universe after having an experience like that is maybe part of the healing. Um, but it does a lot more than that, which I'd like to talk to you sure. about. Yeah, please explain. Okay. So the earliest studies on ketamine showed that people would, uh, get the medication, go through this psychedelic experience, and then for a week or 10 days or even months afterwards, they would report that they felt better. 
And there's lots of standardized like scoring tests to measure your depression or your anxiety. And there's hundreds of different scoring tests. So these different studies would be like, no, we gave this person ketamine and look, they felt really good for 10 days, but nobody knew why. And it hasn't been until maybe the last five or seven years that the, at least to me, that the really interesting data is coming out. And so what we're seeing now is that doing studies at more the cellular level or like the, you know, looking at your actual sure. anatomy of your brain. Research is showing that after even a single dose of ketamine, you can see the neurons in your brain regrow connections to their neighboring neurons, new synapses, you know, between the, the neurons and even more of the branching of the neurons. And then you can see using imaging like MRI machines that the the neural circuits that you th use when you're thinking are actually changed and strengthened after getting ketamine. So you can put somebody through wow. an MRI machine and have them feel emotions like feel sad, feel happy, see what pattern their brain is in, and then go through ketamine treatments. And within even hours or days later, you do the same MRI machine and there's new like pathways that have opened up. So this would be, and I've heard uh, the term neuropathways. This is what that is. Yeah. So neuropathways or neuroplasticity is kind of the buzzwords that people are using, like plasticity, meaning like ability to more for change. So neuroplasticity. Sure. Wow. Which is honestly groundbreaking research and the, the the thought that you can have a medication that stimulates your nerves to grow and connect more right huh. the, the, the actually the possibilities are endless and you have to be careful as a physician to not give people false hope or to um, push something beyond what we actually understand but a lot of people are saying well geez if this is regrowing neurons how about for alzheimer's patients or how about somebody who's after having a stroke or a head injury, like, um, is this going to be helpful to regrow neurons in these types of people? And there's a slew of studies now ongoing to see if ketamine is going to be beneficial beyond just the mental health stuff that's been studied the most. Amazing. Um, yeah. Is this the experience? Would you say those who do microdosing of mushrooms, because you 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 call this halluc hallucinogenics? Um, would you say it's kind of a similar experience? Yes and no. So mushrooms is a different chemical altogether, but it is sure. still a, like a hallucinogenic. When you microdose the psilocybin, that's the chemical. When you microdose, you don't really feel it. Um, the thought is like, Jesus, this is going to help my brain and my neurons. Like instead of taking a whole bunch all at once and like tripping out, right. I'll spread it over like a microdose every day and it should still have the same effects. But you don't get the psychedelic effects with it. Now, if you were going to ask me if the ketamine experience is similar to a psilocybin experience when people do take the full dose and like actually have a psychedelic trip, uh -huh. I would still say similar, but not the same. And it, mainly because ketamine is more of a dissociative that it makes your consciousness dissociate from your body and sort of literally go into its own little universe and have its experience while forgetting that your body is still there. Psilocybin is typically you're in your body still, you can still move, you can still do things purposefully, but then the psychedelic experience kind of encroaches into your consciousness and you don't dissociate or like disappear into another universe. Ketamine is different in that you're, you know, you leave your physical realm kind of behind. Gotcha. Not like a, like a disconnect, but in a good way. Yeah. In a good way. I mean, there's, there is a risk that people can have a bad experience with it if they end up with anxiety or fear. Um, you can't really turn it off. So once they have the ketamine, they're gonna, they've got 40 or 50 minutes of a hallucinogenic experience in front of them. You can't really turn it off. But and you're so, there. And I just want to say, because you're, you're all about the guided, the guided ketamine experience. Are you there with them during that time? And are you walking that journey? Yeah. So there are some clinics that will just put you in a room, in a recliner, give you the medication, maybe watch you on a camera, but like leave you alone in the room. 
And in fact, when I did, when I was a patient getting ketamine, that's how I did mine. And I felt kind of alone sometimes or like uh, on my own. And I know there was, there was at least one time when I had kind of a fearful experience and I, re I kind of like kind of came to and my body was like hollering, you know, like moaning, like I was having a bad dream. And I was like, for a second, I was like, who's screaming and or, you know, yelling. And then I was like, came back a little bit and was like, Ooh, that was me. Holy cow. But there was nobody there with me. Right. And then also having to travel afterwards. And so that's, that's actually exactly why I've set up my business the way that I have, which is a, it's a mobile ketamine clinic, like a house call doctor. Wow. So I <laughs> Ima that imagine that what, what is, what is old is now new again, you know, doctors making house yeah. calls. Um, but yeah, being one-on-one -on -one with somebody and that's, that's, I would have to say that is the, the major difference that you're there you know, when somebody um, calls upon you, you know, fee involved, obviously, for the visit uh, and the medication, but at least there's somebody with you in that journey and that understands it, has done it. Yeah. People in the psychedelic world will talk about set and setting. So the mindset and the setting that you're in when you have the experience. And so... I feel like I've had enough experience giving ketamine through my career, enough experience having it as a patient that I am kind of in a good position to explain to the person what is going to happen. Sure. Uh, prepare them for what, you know, getting through it. And then the setting, in, if somebody can do it in their own bed or on their own couch with like their cat on their lap, that's like. Talk, talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, perfect situation, comfortability just your surroundings, you're in your zone. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, very unique. The only negative, and I never want to gravitate toward negative, but you can only do this in the Salt Lake City area for you because that's where you're located. Can't do it virtually. It's got to be administered, you know, in home or in that area. Um, how does somebody find you? How does somebody connect with you? Yeah. So the name of my business is Guided Ketamine, like I'm a guide. Um, so guided ketamine, Salt Lake city is the name of my website. Or if you just searched up guided ketamine, you can find it that way. Sure. And now final questions here, Nathan, how do you make the determination that somebody's the right candidate? They reach out to you. What happens from there? Yeah. So actually that's a very interesting question because what I'm doing is only part of the picture, right? So I'm an emergency room doctor. I understand the medication. I can deal with the complications. If you stop breathing well, if you threw up and aspirated, if you had a seizure, you know, like I, I have all my equipment that I bring with me to deal with like the medicine administration part of it and sure. dealing with any potential side effects, but I'm not a therapist and to do it the right way, you really have to pair this with a mental health professional that can help you process it and, you know, deal with it in more conventional ways. Sure. Um, so I can go through a screening process. I can see who I th think would be a good candidate, but the recommendation every time is to not only use me, but to have a mental health professional there uh, in the next day or two days to kind of follow up and help process everything. 100%, because you also, I believe, get the maximum benefits when you're working with a mental health professional um, to understand where you're at now, how you're feeling. And then that, you know, could, could dictate another, um, a session with you and, and on, um, fascinating. Heard about ketamine, knew a little bit about it. Um, what an interesting niche and, and you're writing on the research as well. It's not just you're pushing the plunger and administering it. There's a lot going on behind it. Yeah. There's kind of two different sides to the psychedelic world. There's very much, there is kind of like, the hippie new age kind of psychedelic sure. side of it. And I've never been that in my life. I've always been data driven, science driven, you know, Western medicine, I'm an ER doctor. And so I, I, I think it's really interesting that the two worlds are kind of combining because for me, I'm like, show me the study that says the, what you're saying, which is different than some of the people in the sort of psychedelic world. But I think it's a great 
combo of the two. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. And I'll tell you that I am connected to doctors who have described to me experimentation with psychedelics and just because they were curious. And that was guided from another physician that did them just to, just to learn what it's about. What's, what's the feeling, you know, just so you have a, you're well-rounded. Um, Nathan, great talking with you today. Learned a lot. Uh, fascinating yeah. how this is helping people move their lives forward. And uh, thank you for sharing everything today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those round trips that you plan in advance, which are perfect on your way there and perfect on your way back? Or those meetings with friends for which you make a group chat three months before so that nobody or anything is missing? Or your daughter's first birthday party? You planned it with such dedication that instead of the first, it felt like our quinces. The same way you plan each detail for those moments. Start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. Get started at ready.gov slash plan. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council.